Daf Mem Hey of Ter Er. Today we're learning Parshas Vayechi, the first Maimer Yehuda to Yeducha. And uh, this is this Maimer in Ter Er is also the Maimer which uh, upon which the Rebbe's Maimer Yehuda to Yeducha Tashilam Ches is uh, based, and many other Maimarim. Okay. So the, this is in the blessings that Yaakov gave to his sons before Yaakov passed away. So in the blessing to Yehuda, he says, Yehuda, Ata, Yehuda, that, that Yehuda, you, your brothers will praise you. Now this word, Yehuda, Haida, Yehuda, Maida, it has many meanings. It could mean to praise, it could mean to thank, it could mean to admit. Now, and this is why Yehuda received his name as Yehuda. Uh, on this, to do with this uh, idea that uh, Leah said that Hapam Oide, that this time I will thank Hashem, and therefore she named her son Yehuda because of this Thanksgiving. She was happy about having a, a fourth uh, child. And uh, this is a Jewish trade in general. The Jewish people are called Yehudim, that's the Hebrew of the word Jew. Uh, which is about uh, uh, being thankful and being humble, like Maidam and Achonlach has in it both the connotation of thanksgiving as well as uh, we admit we, before you, we are, we're humble before you, like we say in Aleinu, that we bow, we kneel and bow and Maidim. So this idea of Maidim is to do with the uh, bittel, to do with self nullification. But Within this world, we're not able to be at a constant state of uh, of bitter, and therefore Leah said, Hapamoida, I can only thank and I can only be in this state of humility right now because it's not constant. Whereas the real idea, <coughs> idea of Yehuda is constant uh, humility and constant self nullification, and that's why the name is Yehuda with a Yud at the beginning of the word, which Yud it implies constant, like it says about Eov, Kacha Yase Eov, so Eov would do that, that's what he would do constantly. And uh, therefore, uh, after Leah gave birth to the three previous children, Reuben, Shimon, and Levi, so that's when she was able to achieve the level of Yehuda. And this is uh, the idea of Yehuda uh, Achecha, that your brothers will, will uh, praise you, meaning that Yehuda achieves his goal and the best that he can get through his brothers, and in particular, the brothers that come before him. So the concept is we need to understand what does Ruven mean, what does Shimon mean, what does Levi mean, and then we can understand how Yehuda takes them all and brings it to the next level. So Ruven literally means Ruven, see my son. It comes from the idea of seeing, vision. And uh, this is uh, also connected, the same word for Re'iya, which is vision, seeing is the same word for Arye, a lion, uh, and and the, the in the Merkava and the Holy Chariot in the vi, in the uh, vision of Yechezkel talks about the Pnei Arye, the face of the lion on the right, which uh, Ruven is on the right. The idea of vision comes from close, whereas hearing means you're further away. You're just hearing about it. You don't actually see it, and that's also why Ruven. His camp was in the south, which is on the right. When you face east, east is forward. So then south is right, and uh, north is left. Uh, because you, we, we, it's when we're feeling close, like the Pasuk says in Oshea uh, about the uh, first uh, fig, uh, that it says, that uh, like a right fig on a fig tree in its beginning, I saw your forefathers. So this idea that seeing is connected to being excited about this new fruit, closeness. And therefore... Uh, Leia continues, Ki Yevani Ishi, that when she's naming, she names Ruvain, she says that Hashem has seen my affliction and now my husband will show the greater love for me. And uh, so we see the idea of Hashem has seen vision, bringing to Ava love, because vision is when you're close, when you're close, and that brings to love. And the idea spiritually is uh, when the Jewish people are just uh, mesmerized, they're just gazing, staring at the glory of Hashem. 
and this awakens the love that the neshama just wants to cleave to Hashem. And this is really the goal of davening. That's why we have Pesukah de Zimra and the first bracha before Shema, Yetzer, which is all in order to rouse a love of Hashem, which is the concept of Reuven, vision, which is love. Because it's not good enough to just know about Hashem, know about Hashem's greatness, because you can know something and it doesn't affect your behavior. Even the thief, like the, the Gemara says, that even the thief, when thief when he is uh, at the doorstep and is about to go in to steal, he davens to Hashem, he prays to Hashem. That's not good enough. What we need is that it should, it, it, it should be internal, it should be internalized and have an impact on us. That's not good enough. What we need is that it should, it should be internalized and have an impact on us in the way we live. And not just market, not just being superficial and surrounding us, and uh, that, that that it should actually come come out as actual love, and uh, in a revealed way that we should uh, speak a lot about Hashem's and with excitement with excitement about Hashem's praises and to think deeply into it about how really. Uh, Hashem is beyond all of creation. Hashem is Yachid, like we say in Baruch Shomar, and Chei Olamim, the life force, the vitality of worlds, is Melech. It only comes from Malchus, but Hashem is really beyond. Now, the true idea of Yachid is that there's only Hashem, where, whereas Echad is even in a is even in a place where there is uh, there's the seven heavens and the earth, which is the Ches, is eight, is seven heavens and earth, and Dalit is four, four directions. Even in that place, Hashem is one there as well. And when we think about these things, about how everything's nullified before Hashem, the only real thing is Hashem. And uh, even uh, the, uh, the, the uh, highest, the life force of both physical things and spiritual things, it all, it all goes up in, to be included in Hashem. And that's why we say, L'cha Hashem Agdola V'agvora, that to you Hashem is all the seven midas, the Gdola, uh, which is uh, Chesed and Gvora is discipline, Tiferas, Netzach, all the seven midas are L'cha, that to you, they're all nullified before Hashem. But the idea of independent existence is only possible at the level of Baruch Shem, which we say right after Shema, Baruch Shem Kareem Achsel when we're talking about just a name of the glory of his kingship, so it's not Hashem himself, it's just a ray of a ray of a ray of Hashem, and coming out of Malchus, so then you can have the idea of, of others. Uh, to, uh, it, that it appears that there is other existence. So when a person thinks deeply into these ideas, and not just to know about them, but to really try to internalize them and be focused and involved in them, heart and mind. So then this will bring to a love of Hashem that he should yearn for Hashem. That's that's all he should want. They should like just uh, jump out towards Hashem. And then he'll fulfill the mitzvah of Ahavta Hashem Lekecha, that you should love Hashem, that he'll cleave with Hashem and want nothing but Hashem. When he realizes that there's not, that the, the real thing is only Hashem, number one. And number two, that Hashem, despite being so, so beyond, is invested in us. Next paragraph, in exit. So now when we talk about loving Hashem, it says that in Shema, B'chol Vavcha continues, you should love Hashem with both of your souls, meaning not just with the Yetzir Toh, with the naturally holy inclination, but also with the Yetzir Hora, and that it, his, his love should be in a way of Baal Shuvah, that uh, even the uh, animal soul, the Nefshi Bahamis, also uh, joins in. And... Uh, people make the mistaken uh, assumption that you can only do tshuva if you have sinned. Just because you, have, you haven't sinned, you should miss out on tshuva. Tshuva is about returning to Hashem, and, uh, and it's about uh, coming close to Hashem. And uh, someone who didn't sin also, the fact that he's in a physical world, he's far in a way, and his, his reality is not just godliness, and therefore he needs to come close. This was one of the uh, things that disturbed the opponents of Hasidus in the times of the Alter Rebbe, they, because the Alter Rebbe would quote from uh, Zaya that, that Mashiach is coming to bring the tzaddikim to do teshuva. They said, what disrespect, what chutzpah. You're saying that the tzaddik also needs to do teshuva? He's already good. So the Alter Rebbe here is saying, and in other places, no, that everyone needs to do teshuva, even someone who's a righteous needs to do teshuva as well. 
So the idea of Tshuva is to return and to be close to Hashem because the Nishama came down through all the levels into this world and anything that it understands about Hashem while it's in a body is all within the limitations of time and place. And therefore he wants to return and cry out to Hashem. I'm in limits, I'm in constraints and distress. My Nishama is in distress. Free me from the bondage of Egypt, which Mitzrayim is uh, the idea of Metzah, of limitations and boundaries and through this uh, bitterness that he wants to leave he wants to get out and come close so that will uh, strengthen and expand his love that he should he should have an even more passionate love to be included in us in Hashem it's unlimited light uh, and this is like the advantage of darkness oh uh, darkness over light that when you're in a place of darkness the light that comes afterwards is even more powerful and this is what uh, Chazal mean when they say in Gemara that the Markham Shabali Shiva Emdim, that where the Baal Shiva can stand, even a perfect Tzadik can't stand. Like it says in Zoya, that the Baal Shiva comes close to Hashem with more power. You know, because uh, so, uh, to have Hashem, Hashem's unknown light revealed on, upon himself, so that even his body and even his animal soul and his whole being should be transformed and return to Hashem and transform the darkness into light. This is what Leah meant when she said that Hashem has seen my affliction, Kira Hashem Ba'anyi, meaning that even when she is, she's in a state of affliction, a state of bitterness where she's far away, so actually from that bitterness, that brings cl uh, us close even more. That uh, our Esrosh Lusata, our awakening, our trying from below, brings uh, Esrosh Zilla an awakening from above, and that that's the idea of and then yevani ishi then my husband will love me and this is the real marriage is uh, the ultimate marriage is between the jewish people and hashem so the hashem is like our husband and it says that when mashiach comes uh, we want we'll call hashem ishi well we won't use the word bali but ishi and uh, that's why Leah here uses the words yevani ishi that my ish will love me and that's when we come close fully together with Mashiach. Now this word Ishi, my husband, my man, also means my fire. And this is the yearning for Hashem, that's our passionate fire. And uh, then Hashem will be Ishi, there's the that Hashem will be my fire. In other words, that we're totally one with Hashem. That we're uh, we're hugging and we're 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 fusing together with Hashem. That Hashem sh should be revealed on our uh, upon our neshama, upon our soul through this desire and yearning. Next paragraph. So this is all Ruven, which is the first paragraph of Shema, which is the idea of Ratsu, yearning to jump out towards Hashem. Then the second paragraph of Shema is Shimon. Shimon means to hear, and Vahayim Shemaya begins, it will, it shall be if you will hear, if you will listen. So that's the idea of Shimon, and that's the idea of when we're far away and we're just doing what we have to do, the idea of Shuv, where we just focus on what we need to do, because when you see, that's close, and that's a state of love, of Ava, but hearing is from afar and that causes reverence, like the Pasuk says, Hashem shamati shimecha yoresi, that I have heard, and I'm afraid. So, so we see that, that hearing is connected with reverence, because when, why do you have reverence? Why do you have fear for, for something? It's uh, because it's distant from you, and uh, that's the side of the left. And you feel, who am I to come close and then he feels this year or this fear, and like it says at the time of Matan Torah, the giving of the Torah, that Vayara Miyanur, that the people uh, saw and they they and then they trembled, and they uh, and they stood from afar. That because they trembled, uh, that they had this sense of fear. So that's why they moved far away. So we see the idea of distance is connected with Yira, like it says. That imrot libcha, if your heart is running with jumping out with this rotzi, this yearning for Hashem, so then shuvlech and return to one. And that's just follow instructions, get a grip of yourself. And through fear, through reverence, we just shake up and we continue what, doing what we need to do. This is the second paragraph of Shema, 
which is about year on. Therefore, it says, be careful. You have to be careful in case you uh, get convinced and you go astray. And that's why with Shema, and it says, Hashem has heard Kisnoa, that Leia was uh, disliked. Like, and this is the idea of, uh, of uh, despising and, and being disgusted by one's, uh, uh, oneself when, they, when, he, when he behaves badly. And through uh, the, using some gavura, some uh, 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 discipline and severity and reverence, so smell doch the left pushing aside. So that through that avoid uh, that that we do, it causes Hashem to uh, also respond uh, with this uh, reverence, with gifting us with this yira from afar. Now. Shema is, uh, as we see, connected to Chesed. Vahayim Shema is connected to Gevura. But still, the number of, let, of words in each uh, parsha is, seems to be opposite. Shema is 42, uh, 42 uh, words, which 42 is connected with Gevura. Whereas uh, Vahayim Shema is 72 words, which is connected to Chesed. And that's because... Yes, uh, uh, Vahafta is Chesed. Uh, the first paragraph, Shema Vahafta is Chesed, but it's Chesed mixed in with a little bit of Gvora. And yes, Vahim Shema is Gvora, but it's mixed in with a little bit of Chesed. And therefore, the, the numbers of words represent what has been added to each paragraph. Now, after Shema, the next section. Right, because uh, Vayomer is an add-on paragraph. The main two paragraphs is Shema and Vahim Shema. And then the, after Shema, the bracha that we say after Shema is Emes Vayatid, where we say 15 expressions again about how it's true and it's real and it's what we want and it's lovely, etc. Uh, so what is so lovely? Hatovar said this matter. And uh, we're saying so much that this is true and this is what I want and this is real. This is the idea of Levi. Levi means to connect. Leia said this time my husband will bond with me because we've got Shema is the right, love. Vahim Shema is the left, reverence. And then the middle is, tif- is uh, Tiferis and Yusei, which is bonding. So... Uh, so, uh, and th- this is what the uh, the pasuk means that uh, that the left is under the head. That's the left which uh, pushes aside, but then that causes to lift up beyond to lift up the head, uh, and then Yemina to to the right side embraces me, and that's the idea that the right is love and 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 uh, coming close and therefore embracing. So now Levi, which is the idea of bonding, uh, is uh, this uh, paragraph of MSV Yatsiv. And what is Hadavar Zeh? What is this matter that is true and real and, and, and what I love? It is Torah, because Torah is a very high source, the top of the second side. But it, Torah is brought down to uh, involve itself in physical matters to instruct us on how to live in the physical world and that's why Torah is like water because it comes from a very high source and goes down like water which is poured down so a person can tell himself it's true that I'm really not worthy and I don't have the spiritual capacity to come close to Hashem and to do this deep tshuva returning and yearning and coming coming close to Hashem after all, me, Yalav Hashem, who can really ascend, honestly say they can ascend on the mountain of Hashem? I'm not so clean. But still, because Hashem comes down to me, Hashem is enclosed in Torah. And therefore, when the Torah comes down into this physical world, Hashem is coming down. And therefore, since the Torah came down to me, so when I learn Torah, I can then come back up and bond with Hashem. And, and that's the idea of uh, what we were saying in Ratz Libcha, that if your heart uh, runs with yearning for Hashem, Shavlecha, return back to one, that in the Echad, in the returning back and just doing what you need to do, you'll find the love there. In other words, the fact that Torah came down to us, that will give us the impetus that we're able to jump up. And uh, this is uh, why in the paragraph M of Siyatsi, we say these 15 expressions of affirming that it's real and true and what we want. 
And for us and for our ancestors and our children, the early generations, the later generations. Uh, so th this is all about bringing Hashem's light down, that it should rest and uh, it should be revealed, it should be manifest in the physical world through Torah. So that's Levi. Next paragraph. But all three of these levels, Ruven, Shimon, and Levi, which corresponds to Ava, love, Yira, reverence, and then Levi is bonding through Torah, that we have the, the Hashem, uh, we're bonding with Hashem through having Hashem's Torah in our head. So that's all Mamalikon. That's all a light according to energy, according to what we're able to take in. And that Ruven is a light of love and yearning uh, to yearn for Hashem and to come close to Hashem. But it's not so vivid. It's not Hashem's un unlimited light for itself. It's it's a, lo a love that we can try to achieve. And uh, the same thing with the rest of the levels that they're all within Mamale, whereas Yehuda is this simple humility, this si simple bit of self nullification. And that is connects to Sova because it's not our ability that we're able to work up a love or a reverence or bonding through our ability in Torah. It's just a simple bit. Of, and when we're bottled to Hashem, then, we, then Hashem can just shine through, uh, through us. And that's the level of Shemayn Esrei, where we bound Shemayn Esrei in, in total bittel, and this is beyond even Shema, and, and beyond them is Vyatsit, which we're all mamale. And therefore, we, don't, we bound Shemayn Esrei, and we say it quietly, which that's the idea of Sovev, and therefore there's no expression, because it's a beyond... You can't even call it an Ava love. It's just simple bittel to Hashem, which then uh, lets Hashem shine through in a beyond way. And we're pouring out our, our soul to Hashem the, to be totally nothing before Hashem. And that's, uh, and, and, uh, that's the idea of Yehuda, that Yehuda is, uh, he does this humility, and then Yaakov's blessing to him is Yehuda, Atta, the very first word after his name, the first word in the blessing is you. The idea of you it means that you're pointing, meaning that Hashem, that uh, the idea of revelation uh, that is facing me is right in front of me. In order to get there, you have to first have Ruben, Shimon, and Levi, which are Ava, Yira, and Terah. And then through that, we can get to this uh, high level of, of Bittal. Um, because without starting with Ava, Yira, and Terah, then our, our Bittal will just be a be simple obedience but uh, not an internal bittle that, that our whole self is, is, is given over. Uh, and, uh, and it won't be, uh, it won't be uh, really internalized. It will just be market. It will just be superficially surrounding us. And therefore, you can't start Shemayin Esra until you've, worked, you've reached that level through first doing the most we can, which is uh, with the uh, Shema and Nemes Vyatsev, together with all the introductions before that, Sufi Zimra and uh, Yotar, etc., and uh, at Mincha, we don't have to say it all again because Mincha still continues with a trace of the energy from Shachris. But with Maria, we do say Shema and the blessings of Shema again. And uh, this uh, links to the idea of not Chilas and Besofan, but the, end, the beginning is wedged into the end. So we uh, use the same process at Maria that we've used at, in the beginning, Shachris. Now, interestingly, the different vows of Hebrew, the different Nekodes, relate to different uh, uh, spiritual qualities. So Shuruk, as it, it relates to uh, Bittal, Haidah, and it, as it is explained on the Pasuk in, in our parasha, Velasei Reik Abani Asenei, that, uh, that Shurik is, is just this simple humility and self-nullification, whereas Segel is Av of the year, it's the uh, passionate love and reverence of Hashem. So seemingly, and, and it says that Shurik is lower than Av of Yira, seemingly what we're saying here is that Yehuda is higher than Rubin Shem and Levi because his Sova, which is beyond Mimale. Uh, so what's going on? How come in elsewhere we say that Shurik, which is Bittal, is below Segel, below the Segel, which it makes sense. It's like the map, the uh, sort of chart of the spheres, chesed, where it's a ferris, it's a segel. Uh, and uh, so what's going on? So the answer is that there's two types of the uh, of uh, haida. There's the basic haida, just obedience, and then there's the high level haida, uh, which is a, a, a complete uh, sort of uh, 
giving oneself over and, and uh, uniting, fusing into Hashem. So David was at this high level of Bittu. And he said, I don't hope for you, I'm just silent. I have no independent existence, so it says, besides Hashem. And we see with Eliyar Navi, when he came back to Sinai and he had this revelation of Hashem, there was the, the, uh, the earthquake and there was the fire and in everything it says, Lev Arash, Hashem, Lev Eish, Hashem, Hashem was not in, right? He's not in the, uh, the uh, earthquake and in the tornado and not in the fire. But then where is Hashem found? In the cold Mamadaka, in the silent, soft voice. And that silence of voice is uh, the bittal, which is beyond uh, the midas, which is what we aim to achieve in Shemayin Esrei. But in the fire itself, we don't, that, that's the passion of the emotions. You won't find Hashem there, although it's working, it's trying to connect, but it's not actually Hashem. Whereas in the soft, silent voice, that's where you actually find Hashem. Uh, and uh, this is the idea of Yehuda. Uh, the idea of uh, Yehuda, who he is this level of bittal, and therefore Atta you, we're pointing right, is right in front of us, which represents a revelation of Hashem. Uh, but sometimes uh, this uh, Yehuda, this uh, bittal is not without revelation. It's without the having the full intensity and, and, and picture. Um, and that's the basic obedience. But when it is with revelation, that's the high level of bittal. Now, the blessing of Yoda continues that Yod Ovecha, that your hand is on the back of the neck of your enemies. So Ovecha, the enemies, is what tries to disturb us from our devotion to Hashem, all uh, physical pleasures and matters of this world. So yes, a person needs it, but he should only be involved in them with Oref, with the back of his neck, meaning without, without uh, focus and without excitement. He's just doing it because he needs to do it. He eats because he needs to eat in order to live, etc. And uh, just as if he's forced by a by a, a shed by some sort of malach or demon to do what uh, do what he has to do, but he's not excited about it. Uh, and when we say yot that your hand uh, is on the on the uh, back of the neck of the enemy, so so we've got Hashem's uh, hand, which is ready to receive those who come to return to Hashem. And like it says that when the Jewish people were leaving with Shrayim, it says, that the Jewish people Hashem, uh, saw Hashem strong, his mighty arm, that he, that he uh, uh, did uh, all the makas and the miracles against Mitzrayim. Because who put us here? Who put us in this place where there's all these uh, uh, physical pleasures and, and, and everything of this world screams the opposite of what we're learning right here in, 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 in Torah and in Hasidus? That uh, Hashem Echad, that Hashem is one and that's it. So this itself is from Hashem and it gives us an opportunity to transform darkness into light. That he can use the, the energy that he gets from the eating in order to dub into Hashem as long as he doesn't get involved in an internal way. He's just doing it from, from the, like the back of the neck without involvement. And this is uh, Yadcha, the hand of Yehuda, that Yehuda is with total bittal, total self-nullification and, and, and reaches savor where everything is equal and darkness and light are all the same because really even light is a, is a descent to, from Hashem and even darkness it's still Hashem so they're both Hashem and they're both a descent so it's the same idea like we say so that even Chachma compared to Hashem is Asisa is just an action is something you make it's not uh, it's not a high spiritual level so that's advantage of Yehuda the total bit or total, total self nullification and when is involved in other things, it's without passion. And therefore, even when he finishes davening, but a mark of the davening, a trace of the davening still remains. Uh, but this is only if he was involved only in an external way without excitement, without and without pun and without facing, without really caring. So then the uh, the passion of davening stays even after davening. But what's the uh, ultimate cause of uh, reaching this stage of uh, Yehuda and, and of, uh, the, of Bittal and of uh, transformation? So it's through the, the continuation of the blessing of Yaakov. 
that Yaakov continues the pasuk, that the sons of your father shall bless you. Uh, sorry, should uh, bow to you. So the idea of bowing is bringing down, and also in Shemayin Esrei, when we bow, we're bringing down, like we said about Yaakov, when he bowed to Yosef, he was bringing down a spiritual energy. And when we say that the sons of your father shall bow, so father represents, uh, like the Pasuk says, uh, uh, that Karachim of Albanim, like a father has mercy on his children, so it represents Rachmanos. And what are the children of Rachmanos? Like it, because it says that the uh, children of your father shall bow to you. The children of Rachmanus of mercy is tzedakah. That if someone has mercy for someone, he'll be clari- uh, He'll he'll give to him in a way of clarity uh, and uh, chesed and kindness to help uh, su- support and sustain those who are feeling downtrodden. So this is uh, this is uh, one aspect of bnei avicha and also avicha's taira which the Torah is the fa- father, because the uh, Chochma and Bina is the father and mother. And like it says, Shema B'ni Musar Vicha, listen, my son, to the uh, rebuke of uh, your father, and this is Torah Shibich Sav, and then uh, and the Torah of your, ma- of your mother is Torah Shibah Peh. So we see that, that Torah Shibich Sav is the father. So, so B'nai Avicha is those who are occupied with Torah. And so when we're involved in these things, in the, in the merciful tzedakah together with Torah, so then they'll bow to you, meaning they'll bring down Hashem's uh, light uh, upon us, that the uh, Torah and the acts of kindness, they give the strength to the, our soul to awaken the love and reverence of Hashem and then ultimately reach the level of Haidah, of and 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 uh, oneness before Hashem, and therefore Yoducha Achecha, the brothers praise Yehuda that through Reuven Shimon Levi, through Ava Yira and uh, bonding in Torah, so then we get to the stage of Yehuda, this full Bittel. Okay, now beer on this Maimer. So the uh, Shvatim are in two, there are two ways that the Shvatim uh, uh, are manifest. There's the Shvatim uh, from below to above, that they uh, yearn for Hashem, they want to elevate towards Hashem, and that they go down into this physical world. Going up, elevating towards Hashem, Allah is uh, the feminine uh, uh, energy, whereas uh, bringing Hashem's light into the world, that's the masculine energy. The Shvatim have both aspects. Now, we said in the Maimon Vayeshev that the Shvatim come from Olam Bria, from the world of Bria, and therefore they want to elevate to Atzilus, closer to Hashem. So when the Shvatim do their part, so then Esra still a an arousal from below, elicits an Esra still Ela, an arousal from above, that uh, through us trying to develop, to develop a love and a closeness to Hashem, which is the level of Ruvain, like we said, that uh, Reuven uh, is a vision, and Reuven is the, the Re'iyah is the same letters as Arya, the lion, which is on the right of the Merkava of the Holy Chariot. And we just we we're just gaze, gazing in a mesmerized way in Hashem's glory. So this then brings us to a love of Hashem, and then Hashem responds in kind, revelation with the revelation. Uh, of being able to see Hashem in a much deeper level. And and uh, and so this is the idea of Reuven. Then we have Shema, in which Shema is the second paragraph of Shema in Shemaya. Uh, and uh, when Shema uh, achieves the most he can in terms of Yira, in terms of reverence, so then Hashem responds in kind. Now, Re'iyah is from close, whereas Shema and Shmiya is from afar. And uh, this is... And this is the idea of shuv, uh, that when we just do what we do what we need to do in this world, rather than rotsi, which is love, that yearning for Hashem. And uh, what does it say about Shema? And Leah says that Hashem has heard that I'm hated and I'm disliked, and therefore gave me this another son. Uh, that uh, this uh, brings, therefore, from uh, from. Uh, Shema, and we end up with the closeness. Now, of course, when it says snow, it doesn't mean literally hated. It means uh, that it, that that Yaakov loved Rachel more than Leah. 
but not that it's actually hated, but through uh, the Aveda from afar, which is Yira. So, uh, and Smeldocha pushing aside uh, uh, discipline and restraint. So that's connected to the snore being disliked. And, but through this, we lift, or we, uh, we bring down a high, a high level of Ur, and then we get to Levi, which Levi is the 15 uh, words at the beginning of Emes Vyatsev, saying how this is true and this is the way, Emes Vyatsev, Enoch, and Mekayim, etc. And these three levels are the three, uh, there's three lines of the spheres. There's the right, which is Chachma, Chesed, and Netzach. Uh, Chachma is uh, uh, letting the subconscious express. So it's about expression. Chesed also expression. Netzach is planned for victory. Whereas the left is Bina, uh, Bina, uh, the Kavura and Hoed, which are all looking back up and restraints. And then we have the middle line, which is uh, Das, Deferis, and Yisoid, and that's Levi. And through these three levels, we come to Yehuda, which is the level of Haidav, of Bittul, and the ultimate Bittul is Keser, the crown of Malchus, as it is beyond the other spheres, even though Malchus is the lowest, Bittul is just this, the lowest, it has nothing, it just re receives, but it also is the highest, uh, because Malchus is both the lowest and the highest, depending on uh, which way you look at it and which world. So it's like if you have a uh, king, the king receives everything he has from his subjects. He taxes them and receives from them. But still, the king is the leader beyond the people, although he receives from them. So the same thing, Malchus, although it receives from all the other spheres, but it's also a kesser, it's also a crown beyond the spheres. And... Uh, and uh, what, what, we, what we need is to bring down uh, Kesa, which is the hidden level, it's beyond the worlds, that it should be in a revealed way. Like we say, Atta Yehuda, Atta you, meaning we can point to it and it's revealed. And this happens through first working in the vote of all three lines of Ava, Yira, and bonding it through Teira. Now, uh, the first paragraph of Shema is 42 letters, as we said, and the second paragraph is 72. Now, 72 is related to Chesed. 72 is the gematria of Chesed. And uh, 42 is related to Gevorah. Uh, but uh, still, uh, Shema, which is Chesed, has 42 words because, like it, like, uh, it explains elsewhere, that Shema is uh, is Gevorah, but Kliach Chesed, Bikli, uh, sorry, it's a uh, chesed, bikli agvura, the uh, light of chesed, but in a vessel of gvura, where it's Fahim Shemaya is a light of gvura within a vessel of chesed. Then Levi is Emes Vyatsiv. And this is the uh, uh, the uh, higher level beyond uh, beyond the Ava that Ruven achieves. And this is the 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 uh, the uh, Ratzin, which is above Ava, the Ratzin, desire and want, will, willpower, which is beyond uh, love. Then we have the Kodesh Akadosh the holiest of all, which is Shemona Esrei, and Shemona Esrei has to be right after we finish with the, the Brach of Emes Vyatsev. We have to bring it Gal Yisrael close to Shemona Esrei. Uh, because uh, because it, uh, Shemayin Esrei Yehuda feeds off uh, the first three, Robin Shimon and Levi, and uh, then he, he brings down this light of Keser, and then after Yehuda was born, it says that Leah stopped giving birth, but uh, secondary uh, infertility, Vatama and Miletus, he stopped giving birth. What does it mean spiritually? Vatama means to stand. So standing is an expression used about, um, about davening. It's also an expression used about bittel, because when you stand, you're standing still. You're not continuing. You're just standing, not moving. That's the idea of bittel and quiet. And like we use the word keser about quiet, like it says kater lis er. It says in um, in ear, wait for me a little, which is also the idea of bittel, waiting and just, you know, not being active. And that's uh, like it says in Perkei that siyag lechachma shesika that the uh, fence around chachma is uh, silence. That from silence you develop wisdom. Uh, but we see again this idea that keser, which is uh, the beyond chachma, is connected to silence. Now Yehuda is blessed that Yad Chaber his hand is on his enemy's uh, neck. Because sometimes Malchus is in a state where it's uh, 
inspired. Other times it's a, and it's a, a connecting to above revelation of Hashem. Other times it goes down into beyond to the lower worlds where Hashem is concealed, where there's independence in order to refine uh, the, the worlds. And uh, when we're involved in refining, that's uh, that's sort of the back, because Pneumius is when we're just uh, uh, standing right before Hashem, mesmerized before Hashem, one with Hashem. So that's what, we're, that's what the Neshama really wants, and that's what it really gets involved in. And uh, like a fire that just becomes part of the torch, a little fire that just jumps into the big torch. And this, and uh, now the blessing continues, that the sons of your father bless you. And this is, about, sorry, not bless you, bow to you. This is the idea of uh, bowing, is the idea of bringing down Hamshacha uh, from Chachma to Malchus. Because, like we learned, there's a special connection between Chachma and Malchus, the highest and the lowest. Uh, and uh, and Avicha, your father, which is Chachma, is then Yishtachva, bringing down to Malchus, the lowest. And actually, the two uh, spheres that are connected to Bittor is Chachma and Malchus, uh, the basic Bittor of obedience of Malchus, and the just becoming totally one as Chachma. Uh, and, and then uh, Chachma receives some Keser through first developing in all three ways in the Ruben, Shimon, Levi, love, reverence, and Torah. Uh, whereas uh, with uh, B'nai Avicha, with the sons of the father and others, when we're bringing down not from Keser, but from Chachma, this is through Ruben and Levi, the right and the center, which is... Uh, uh, which is through kindness and Torah. And this is why with Ruben, uh, Ruben's uh, naming, Leah says that uh, Hashem saw my affliction because when, because when we're involved in Birurim, in refinement, and in Shuvah returning to Hashem, so it's all uh, where we're going down to a low place and then we return. So uh, this, uh, so we're coming from a place of affliction, a place of bitterness, a place of distance, and he feels bad because it's so far. And then from that, we get more passion and we're able to transform the uh, Nefesh of Hamas, uh, the animal soul on the body. Like the advantage of uh, light that comes after darkness over regular light. So in short, what do we have? We have uh, four stages. We have Ruvain, which is Ava, love, and Shima and Yira, reverence, then uh, Levi is uh, Torah, to really internalizing Torah, which is Hashem's wisdom coming down into this world, with being Mamshaf into this world. And then we get to Yehuda, the higher level of Bittal, which is not just obedience, but where we actually fuse and we are united and Hashem just is able to shine uh, smoothly through us without anything disturbing.